Okay, today we are going to continue with uh, reinforcement theory. Uh, let's go to the uh, over uh, to the uh, PowerPoint if we can. And here we see, if you remember, we discussed the schedules of reinforcement, and I talked about how the size of the reinforcement uh, makes a difference, and we have to obviously the bigger the reinforcement the bigger, the, the more likely, usually, not obviously, but usually, the, uh, see if you can get my picture in the corner there, all right? They're working on it. And, but you have to be careful of satiation, right? If the, come back to me for a second. If the reinforcement is too big, like if let's say you're warning with food and you have a person, uh, 47 candy bars, well, after the 10th candy bar, the person doesn't want candy bars anymore and it's not going to be, not going to work say, or if you're giving the person uh, $75 million, uh, you do that for a year, the person has trillions of dollars, $75 million is chump change, right? I earn that in the bank every day. So you have to be careful about that, but it, or, or in reality. Okay, you got so, so much, you have to be careful about that. Okay, also let's go back to the PowerPoint. We talked about the reinforcement, the most obvious reinforcement. You see a behavior, you reinforce it. Every time you get it, you perform the behavior. You, you, every time you get the per behavior performed, you provide a reinforcement. Okay, either positive or negative, or let's say positive for now. You give the kid person something. Okay. Okay, now this can be useful for initiating behavior, but it has two problems. And we talked about this. It's not practical if, if you're in a class or if you're a... Th Actually, if you're a therapist, you can do it once in a while, but it's tough. You can't do it all the time. Okay. And... Fast extinction occurs when reinforcement stops, okay? Come back to me and I'll explain that. Extinction means that the behavior stops so we feel to stop reinforcing it, right? So the person does it, you give the person a reward. The person does it, give a reward. The person does it, give a reward. This goes on and on and on every time. Like for Skinner, the red, the red hits a bar food. Red hits a bar food. Red hits the bar food. Red hits the bar, red hits the bar no food. Red hits the bar no food. Hits the bar no food. That's it. I'm done. This game is over. If you're constantly reinforcing, okay, when you stop, then the behavior stops quickly. So what Skinner did was piddle with a lot of different schedules of reinforcement. We're going to look at the four most common, actually. Two of them are virtually the same. Uh, or they, They're not the same, but they have the same effect. We're going to look at the four most common. Uh, uh, then we're going to look at, let's go to the overhead, different, uh, to the PowerPoint, different schedules of reinforcement and see how they work. Okay. And what we're going to try to do is get a schedule of reinforcement that's sustainable, practical, and where if you stop reinforcing for just a little while, you don't get this loss of, of behavior right away. So what we're going to do, it took me an hour to draw this, so watch it closely. See how nice that is? Wow. Okay, so what we're going to get is we're going to look at ratio and interval schedules of reinforcement, and we're going to look at fixed and variable. So we're going to look, obviously, at fixed ratio, fixed interval, variable ratio, and variable interval. You'll see that these two, from the point of view of the, of the learner, are just about the same. Okay. So fixed ratio works like this. Reinforcement is provided after a fixed number of behaviors. Okay, come back to me. Okay. So in other words, the rat in the cage. Every 10 hits on the bar, it gets reinforced. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, food. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, food. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, food. Food. Okay? You do it. You don't do it every time. You do it a fixed number of times. So let's say you see that the rat, every time it hits the bar, it gets food. And then you see after 11 times, 10 or 11 times, it stops if it's not reinforced. So you say, oh, I can do it every 10 times. You can 10 the food, 10 the food, right? What? You do a certain amount of work, you get a certain reward. Certain amount of work, get a certain reward. Certain amount of work, you get the reward. What works that way in real life? Real people doing real stuff. What works that way? You do work, what? Say it again, push it down. Your job. Some jobs do and some jobs don't. Remember, the more work you do, the more you get rewarded. What kind of jobs work that way? You do a certain amount of work. Mission. Well, push it down, say it again. Yeah, you said it. Commission. Commissions work that way. You sell $100,000 worth of, of insurance, 
You get a percentage. So, right? So it might not be the, from this person might sell 30, this person might sell 50, the next person sell 25. Oh, there it comes. Bang, commission. Commission, right? You do that amount of work, you get the reward. You sell that amount, you get the reward. Do that, you get the reward. Commissions work that way. And the more you sell, the more money you make. Something else works that way. We don't have that too much anymore, although your Nike sneakers work that way. It's an interesting question. Somebody just push it down and say it. Bonus. A bonus is worked that way. That's a mixed one, right? There are mixes of these. But a bonus says the more you do, right? Except a bonus has to, sometimes a bonus says if you exceed a certain one, you get a reward. So a bonus is a variation of this. There are many variations of these, but that's right. That's in the ballpark. That's right. It's one variation. I don't want to talk about it now. <laughs> and um, piecework works that way. You know what piecework is, right? A lot of the clothing you're wearing works that way. So make five sneakers, right? You get a more. Or the shirts you're wearing, right? My guess is that not too many people here are wearing clothing that was made in the United States, right? The shirt, right? Some are, right? And they, well, these often work, but even places that do work manufacture in the United States, they often work on piecework, right? For every 10 napkins you sew, you get two bucks. Another 10, two bucks. This person sews 50 in an hour, that person gets $10. This person sews 30, gets $3. The person sews 1,000, the person will get, I don't know, I mean, it's a lot of money, right? So the more you do, okay, now, let's take a look at, at what Skinner found out from his research. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, what he found out was fixed ratio, its characteristics are you get a very steady rate of work. It's a plus. The faster you work, the more you get. So you can get those rats, come back to me, you can get those rats going bang, 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 bang on the bar, right? One, two, three, five, four, one, four, one, three, five, four, one, right? Steady rate of work. But, let's go back to the PowerPoint, but... How are we doing on my picture? But the fast rate of extinction, you get a fast rate of extinction, right? It's a minus, right? You stop reinforcing, the behavior goes away quickly. I'll give you an example. Come back to me, okay? The right hits the bar, five times food, five times food, five times food. Let's make it, all right, 10 times food, 10 times food, that's what I said. 10 times no food, 10 times no food, 10 times no food, done. Or the person on commission, you sell the 100,000, you get a commission. Next 100,000, no commission. Next 100,000, no commission. I'm done. I'm not selling anymore. Find a new job. Right? Since there's a study, when it, it's almost like the person says, although Skinner would never talk about mental states. Remember, that's even a person figures, this is up. This game is up. I'm going to stop. So that's a problem. Okay? Now, let's look at the most common. Uh, let's go back here. The most common reinforcement that we use is interval reinforcement. Reinforcement is provided a f at a fixed time interval if the organism does a predetermined minimum amount of work. Okay. So in other words, come back here, right? The Skinner determines if he, uh, the famous one is a pigeon pecking a disc. There was an old thing in this very library, an old eight millimeter film. Some of you don't even know what eight millimeter films are, right? The old days films, it's long gone. But there's a pigeon and it's picking a pecking a disc and it basically said if it pecks the disc at least five times in half a minute it'll get a reward. So the pigeon's picking the disc, right? If you do enough work, okay, and it's on a time scale. So if you do more, you do less, it doesn't matter. As long as you do the minimum. So the pigeon who pecks it 50 times versus the pigeon who pecks it 10 times, they're both rewarded at the end of half a minute if the minimum is four times, right? What works that way in our society? You're paid on a time basis. What? Say it. What are you doing? Salaries work that way. That's a salary. As long as you do the minimum amount of work. So if we're both making $2,000 a, a, a month, Right? And this person files a hundred, you know, a hundred, and I'm doing enough, so I keep my job. I'm firing, I don't know, I'm a file clerk. I file a hundred and something items. In it. And this, uh, this uh, person, she files uh, 125. Well, she's just a sap, right? Doesn't matter. Now, if you fire less than 50, you get fired, right? So you have to have the minimum. Okay? Now, as you might imagine, uh, <coughs> Let's see what happens here, what the characteristics of this are. Let's go to the PowerPoint. There's a fixed interval. Okay, its characteristics are it's a slow, unsteady rate of work. 
okay? And it's a fast rate of extinction. Both are minus. Therefore, therefore, of course, that's the one we use the most. Salaries. Right? Okay, let me tell you. Come back to me for a second. Somebody says, like, don't worry, mine plays London Bridge. It's even worse. I probably should turn it off. Okay? What we should do, so what happens, when you saw the pigeon, it was very interesting. It's almost as though there's a sense I've got to do the minimum work. What would happen, the film starts with a pigeon bending down to eat the food that it has just received, right? It's just been reinforced. And there's a little clock in the corner that shows you, and you know, the schedule you're told is every 30 seconds. Pigeon eats the food, walks around, walks away. After about 15 or 18 seconds, it comes back, pecks the disc once or twice. And then it's like the kid's pigeon has an internal clock. When there's five seconds to go, it comes back, Bang, 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 bang. The food comes, stops, walks around. Five seconds to go, bang, bang, bang. It's like the pigeon knows exactly when there's five seconds to go. Bang, 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 hitting it. By the way, that's very common, right? The pay period is coming. You want to be sure that you didn't, you know, most, the more work is done just before payday than two, the two days after payday. Okay? It's like you want to be sure you did the minimum to get rewarded, right? I live in New York City. There were places you could park from the 1st to the 26th of the month. Didn't make any difference. 27th comes. You don't wait with the cop that gives out the least traffic tickets, right? It doesn't look good. They're ticketed it everywhere, right? So I don't know if that's still true, but th those, kinds of, those kinds of things. So it's unsteady rate of work. There's no incentive to work harder. And there's a fast rate of extinction. You don't get your salary for a couple of weeks, you're out of there. Pigeon goes of three, four times, or the rat's banging the bar, the pigeon's pecking a disc. Food doesn't come, it stops. So, of course, this is the one we use the most, salaries, right? Typical salaries. So, it looks, it looks like a ratio schedule is the best. The faster you work, the more work you do, the more you get rewarded, right? The problem is the extinction. That's the problem. So... What we're going to do, let's go back to the PowerPoint, is we're going to try to use a variable ratio. Reinforcement is provided on the average of a fixed number of behaviors. It's an average. So on the average, for every hundred times the red hits the bar, it's going to get reward 10 pieces of food that drop out of the, the chute where it's being rewarded, okay? So come back to me now. You got it? So it works like this. The red, the red is hitting the bar. It goes one, two, three, four, bang, food. One, two, three, four, five, six, food. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, food. One, two, three, five, six, seven, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, food. One, two, three, food. One, two, three, twenty-five, food. Right? You understand? If you count it up after a hundred, if it does it, if it does it, a thousand times it got rewarded a hundred pieces of food, right? You understand what I'm saying? It's on the average. Well, you can see what happens here. What happens here is that you never know. The next hit on the bar could always give you the food. And even if you've gone, tw and sometimes you can go 20, 25, 30 times, bang, all of a sudden there's the food, right? And then bang, another kind of food, right? What works like this in real life? Slot machine. Say it, push it down and say it. Push it down, I want, I want you to hear, this is it. Go over there and hit one. Here's a degenerate creature here. This is a degenerate human being. Go ahead, say it. Slot machine. A slot machine. I told you it was degenerate. A slot machine. Okay. You put it in, nothing. Put it in, nothing. Put it in, bang, you win. Bang, you lose, win, 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 lose, win. That's how it works. A slot machine has the added incentive of promising many of them, you might get a big, big reinforcement. So you get small ones along the way, but you could hit the jackpot. You could hit the jackpot. Right? Who's been to a casino? Who's been to casinos or been to Vegas, right? Ooh, a lot of degenerate people in this room. Wow. More than half. You'll notice that it says there, loosest slots in town, 98% return. So, well, that's a good idea. I give you $100, I'll get 98 back. Let me go for it. What kind, of, what kind of business is that? Except, since it's variable, you never know. Because you could. And by the way, 
by varying the size, you're not only varying the size of the, before you're varying the size of the reinforcement, you never know, I could hit it, bang, right away, I could hit the first one, or the second one. Right? And just when you get bored with them, bang, it comes back. Now, it's interesting. They offered, Skinner, when Vegas first started opening in the late 40s, they offered Skinner, I believe it was $2 million. This is in 1948, when a good salary was $3,000 a year. So you can double, make, multiply that at least by 10, how much they offered him in today's money. To program the slot machines for the most work with the least payoff, right? Believe me, that was easy for him. He wouldn't do it. Everybody who knew Skinner said he was a prince of a human being, was a lovely fellow. He would never do that, okay? Now, of course, it's individual. How many people you go in, you pull the slot machine three times, doesn't pay, or say, I'm bored with it? Anybody like that? I'm that way. I can't take it. And how many people sit and play slot machines, oh, for an hour or more? Who's ever done that? Oh, more people than sit there. So it depends on who the person is, right? So, and then there's that famous one where you put in, they have 10 lines, you put in 10 quarters. Oh, I won here and here and I got seven back. Oh, whoop de doo and The next time you put in 10, oh, I got eight back. And then you hit 15, right? So it, that's a much more complex thing, but that's the basic idea of slot machines, okay? So that's the idea. And what you get there, the slot machines used to be like this. One of my sons is a stand-up comic. He, he does an imitation. It used to be like this. You put in the five coins, you pull the thing. Put in the five, pull the thing. No more. Now they have a button that says maximum bet, which is five. Button to spin the wheel. People sit there like this. Watching. I won. Forever. What is that? Right? Just okay, the faster the better. Okay, so what we get here with a variable ratio, let's go back to the PowerPoint. What we get with a variable ratio is a steady rate of work, which is a plus, a very slow rate of extinction, and a rapid recovery from extinction. Let me tell you about this. Okay, come back to me. Skinner took rats who are on variable ratios. And he put them in the cage, and they're going bang, 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 the rat was still coming up periodically and hitting the bar a few times. Then it would wander away and hit the bar. Finally, after it was two or two, over two hours, of course, it's on the film, you just not waiting, you make two hours, showing you the clock, the rat basically stopped. And it's wandering around the cage, wandering around the cage, and then just for a reason, couldn't figure out, it was in the cage half an hour or so, it went back and hit, and then he turned it back on. Went back, hit the bar, the food came. Bang, 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 bang. It's right back to the work. So not only do you get a very slow reaction, people work a long time for that. Okay? People work a long time. And the minute, even if the worker is almost going, you reinforce it again, and the rate goes right back up. I mean, it was shocking. This rat was bored with the bar, hits it once, and all of a sudden, it's like I've been ruined. What works like that? Anybody a parent? He was a parent here. Anybody a parent? Oh, we have a few parents here. What works like that? You know what works like that. Nagging works like that. Nagging. You know, it's just an accident. It's an accident that all of the candy and all of the junk toys are right at the checkout counter. Oh, please, Daddy, please. Just, I still remember it to this day. Oh, please, my, please. One candy bar just this time. Sometimes you say yes, sometimes you say no. That's, that's, a, that's a variable ratio of reinforcement. It's the perfect way to make sure the nagging goes on forever until, the person go, until your kid goes into a retirement home, right? Forever. It's going to go on. Because you're doing it intermittently. So finally you decide, finally you decide, okay, 
No, I'm going to extinguish this behavior. No, 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 no. And it's slowly, slowly, after weeks and months, you're making some progress. Things are going okay here. And then finally, it basically stops. And then you make that mistake of having a kind heart, right? Kid comes out, can I just this one time have the candy bar? Well, what's today? A she day. She hasn't nagged in so long. Okay, here, have it once. You have just shot yourself through the foot with a cannon. <laughs> Bang! Right back it comes. Sound familiar to people? They have kids? Sound familiar? Yeah. Now, what you've done, if you have to slowly extinguish, now you've reinforced the nagging again. Nag, 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 nag. No, please, just as one. That comes right back. Right? So this is a good one. This is what you want. You want to intermittently reinforce because it's practical, right? You get a high rate of behavior. And you'll see kids. I saw this was actually, with a teacher told me about this. She had a kid in her class who wouldn't raise his hand. Finally, one time she got to raise his hand. She raised his hand. Oh, good. Praise. Apparently you like praise. Okay, good. Began to do it more and more and more. And then she began to do it intermittently. And finally, she said, he was raising his hands constantly. She would only call on him once in a blue moon. Now, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. Like for those of us who said four times in the slot machine, I've had it. Uh, three, four. I, I've, I've had it. I don't want to do it anymore. You have to be careful that you don't, that your schedule is not so long you, know, you don't wait so long between reinforcement that the behavior is ex completely extinguished. But you'd be surprised how that can work, right? You give stars and rewards. We have all this kind of stuff. Okay? Now, just for completeness sake, okay, uh, come back to the PowerPoint. You see, the reason there's a rapid recovery is because it's always true that the next performance of the behavior, that's why you get so much work, could bring the reinforcement. It's always true that that could be, even if a long time goes by. Now, just for completeness sake, we'll do reinforcement uh, variable interval. This is, uh, uh, this is, provided that you get the minimum amount of work, you reinforce it on a variable schedule, on the average of every 20 seconds, right? Get what I'm saying? Okay, so come back to me. The truth is, the truth is that, here, let's go here. You get it here, let's go back to the PowerPoint, I'm sorry. You get a steady rate of work, a slow rate of extinction, and the truth is it's very difficult for the learner to tell the difference between this schedule and the variable ratio schedule. Right? Okay, so because what happens, come back to me, right? You do some work and you get rewarded. You do some work and you get rewarded. Then you wait a while and do some more work. It takes a long you get rewarded. Now, it's really difficult to tell whether it's per time or per, or per, right? Or, or by, you know, so and so every minute or every, you know, 10 times a minute or 10 times, you know, one time every three minutes. It's very hard to tell what the schedule is, right? It's hard to tell, and what happens, since it's hard to tell, you never know. And it usually can't tell. There are people to this day who swear that slot machines are based on this. They're programmed to pay off on a time, not on a, not on a number of spins of the wheel, but how long they've been played. The companies swear no, but you know, what's the difference? Nobody can tell, right? You can't tell. So the key here of, for Skinner is variable schedules, variable schedules. That, for him, is what goes on, okay? That's, what, that's the key, and to do it every so often. And of course, we can do it negatively. You can see the nagging. You can do it intermittently, right? You give in to something, and I, I have to tell you the truth. Word gets around, that's why I tend to be stringent about the rules, particularly the undergrads. So I'm talking about I said that even if it's on TV, right? Because once you start giving out, all of a sudden, before you know it, well, once in a while, it's okay to break the rules and you get away with something before you know it. It's all over the place. And when you have 250 people in class, that causes chaos. Well, I forgot to do this, or I didn't do that, or I didn't put my name in. So that's the point. Now, so we can see, I put, let's go back to the PowerPoint. I put the behavioral classroom. How are you guys doing to get my picture in the corner? We have the behavioral classroom, which is... But it's any behavioral learning situation. What you do is identify the behavioral objective, and you find the reinforcements that will increase the desired behavior. Done. OK? That's really what it is. Now, 
Come back to me for a minute. Okay. Okay. I have one little problem, okay? If I have a student, let's take student uh, A here. Tell us your name, student A. Sam. Sam. Okay, can you see Sam on the screen here? Here, Sam, stand up here. Come over here, Sam. Are you there? There he is. Okay. See Sam's in his seat? <laughs> see that Sam's in his seat? This happens twice a day in a whole school day. He's never in his, he's almost never in his seat. But he is once in a while. I'm okay. Every time he's in his seat, I give him 50 bucks. Or I give him a star. His hands out. You see that? I give him a star. I give him a new car. Whatever it is, I give him a chalk. I do that. I can work, but what in that? But now we have. Colleen. Push it down. Colleen. Colleen. Stand up. Got to stand up. Where's Colleen? You got Colleen here? There she is. Okay. See Colleen? Colleen is never, let me emphasize that, never in her seat. So how am I going to get Colleen to sit in her seat if she's never there? Okay, I'm going to show how I'm going to do it. Colleen, start walking around the room. See if you can follow her. I'll show you what I'm going to reinforce. There she goes. Start walking. There she goes. Keep walking. I'm walking, I'm walking. This is typical of how she is in the class. She drives me nuts. <laughs> drives me out of my tree. I can't stand it. She piddles around. There she goes. I I'm patient. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. There we go. Here we go. Bang! I got it! Right there! When she was right there. Go over there. When I said bang. Here, Colleen, here's a hundred bucks. Good place you're standing. Oh, here's a candy. Oh, look how Colleen's close to her seat reward. Before you know it, <laughs> I've got her standing there. Now she'll come and sit. She'll come to class and stand there, says Skinner. Now she's standing there. Turn around the other way. Do me a favor. Okay, I'm watching her. Okay, I'm going to watch her here. Can you see her? Okay, Colin, go ahead, go ahead. Just, ready? Go ahead, I'm just minding my own business. You do what you want. Oh, there it is, I got it. Right there, she's looking at the chair. I reinforce her. Before you know it, I've got her standing there, standing at the chair, staring at the chair. Skinner's actually done this with people, right? And then she's going to stand here, watch. Go ahead, stand, stare at the chair. I got that, reinforce. Got it, right there. Did you see? <laughs> nobody but nobody can stand perfectly. Did you see her lean forward a little? Just out of pure, you know, her muscles are getting tired. Do that. Before you know it, I'm going to have her like this. Right? Leaning forward like this. And before you know it, I'll have her in the seat. That's what Skinner calls. Thank you very much. Good job. Give her a little hand here. Very good. That's what Skinner calls. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Skinner calls that successive approximation. I approximate the task and successively get closer and closer and closer to what I want. Okay? And from this comes what Skinner calls task analysis. Come back to me for a second. Task analysis basically says that I break the task down into its parts. I teach the small parts and I teach up the parts until I get the big part and I teach up the parts until I get the thing, right? How many people have heard about task analysis? Just one or two? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to tell you right now because you're supposed to be your patients on front. I think it's probably the worst, one of the worst educational techniques ever to hit us. Who's ever done task analysis with phonics? Breaking down the word into its constituent parts? That's what phonics is. B, 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 ball, b, 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 ball is b, a is a, ah, l is l, b, 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 a, a, l, l. My favorite one, this is really true with a kid, he used to go to the YMCA after school. I would come after I taught a class, pick him up at the YMCA, take him to my house, work with him, and then his parents would come pick him up. One of his parents, okay? So he's going like this, he's sounding out ball. Boy, this kid hate phonics. B, 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 a, 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 b, l, l, b, b, a, 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 l, l, lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> of all the words, lasagna. So I had what was going on. So I told him, that was the end of phonics for the two of them. Right? That was it. So the next day I told him, don't come outside. Stay inside. I'll pick you up inside, okay? Just wait by the, the desk. 
because he would wait for me outside, right? So I go out, I went to the desk, I said, what did you have for snack yesterday? I gotta know, to the secretary. She said, I don't remember. I said, please do me a favor, look. She looked, of course, lasagna. You just had lasagna an hour before I picked them up, right? So, <laughs> for the afternoon snack. So the question is whether the parts, this is, let's go back to the PowerPoint. This is what is called reduction. You can, you can reduce the task to the sum of its parts and add up the parts to get the whole. Okay? I'm going to tell you right now, I don't believe that for one second, that the whole is equal to the sum of its parts, and especially when it comes to cognition. And we get to Piaget, I'm going to prove it to you. Okay? Anybody here a music major? I need a woman who's a music major. I need a woman who can carry a tune. Okay, Are you have a high voice? Not real high. Uh-oh. All right, I can probably do because I have a pretty low voice. She and I are going to sing together, and I'm going to show you that the whole doesn't equal the sum of parts. We'll do them when we get to Piaget. Okay, in any case, okay, so let's take a look at what Skinner has to say. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, the first thing, what Skinner is going to say is that we develop by learning. Learning explains development. You are what you have learned. Okay, all the learning theorists, including the next one, which is Ben Dorn, the one after the information processing, I'm going to say that. A lot of people are going to say it's just not true. And we'll get to that. People are obviously motivated externally. All motivation is external from reinforcements and punishments. There's no internal motivation. Okay? Behavior is the only thing that's important. For them, psychology, education, and again with my broad definition of education, means measuring and changing behaviors. Of course, we know thinking has no importance. And the question is, are people active or passive? Come back to me now, we'll talk about passive. The question of active or passive is an extraordinarily important question in psychology. Okay. It's extremely important. Now obviously with Colleen running around the room, right, not sitting where she was, you would say that she was active. But that's not the question. That's not what is meant by active or passive. What is meant by active or passive is active people are motivated by, they are it's internal things, internal drives, internal ideas, internal stuff. They are actively acting on their environment and trying to make sense of it, trying to understand it, trying to draw it into the way they think, right? It's very similar to motivation. A passive organism, people who see organisms as passive, okay, see them as being shaped by their environment, right? So if I'm in math class, here's me in... Uh, Advanced algebra, even worse than geometry, right? I'm like to. Hey, huh? But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm passive. I could have made a decision listening to this guy is a waste of time because I don't understand what he's talking about anyway. I think my advanced time was really was a yeah. So there's no point. I might as well sit back and dream about what I'm going to do tonight, what clothes I'm going to wear tonight to the party. It's a better use of my time, right? You understand what I'm saying? So active or passive is not, oh, these people are active and these people are passive. It's a conception of what human beings are like. For Skinner, they're extremely passive. You can see Skinner says, all you have to do is control the reinforcements in an environment, and maybe to some extent the punishments, the reinforcements in an environment, and you can get people to do whatever you want them to do. People are like lumps of clay that can be shaped that can be shaped by the environment. They're extremely passive. The only limitation on that, the only thing that comes from the environment 
is what, from the individual, excuse me, is what's genetic. So obviously I cannot get anyone with reinforcements to flap her arms and fly, right? You can give me all the reinforcements you want. You can't get me to jump as high as Mr. Michael Jackson. You couldn't have even gotten me to do that 60 pounds ago, okay? I, so that, that's limited, okay? I can't reinforce you to hear the noises that a dog can hear, the high-pitched whistle. We're, we're just limited by that. So I can get a dog to react in certain ways to that high-pitched whistle, right? When it hears this tone, do this. When it hears that tone, do that by reinforcing it, okay? But those are tones that are beyond the range of human capable hearing, so I can't you do anything because you can't hear them. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the limitation. But, so we're shaping, and there are certain sounds that animals can make that humans can't. So I can only shape the sounds that you make when we talked about talking. There are certain sounds that animals can make that humans can't, so I can't get you to do that. Right, but aside from that, not too many. We're pretty good at making sounds. Okay, or, or, or uh, I, can, I can train through reinforcement. I can have a parrot say many, many words. But a parrot always sounds like this. Anybody here ever hear a minor bird? Minor birds are amazing. They can imitate the tone of the voice. There was a, there was a store that right outside the men's department in the old days when stores were downstairs school, my father, there was a minor bird. We'd come by and they trained to say, hello, how you doing, this and that. My father couldn't stand it. He goes by and the bird says, hello, mister. But it wasn't hello, mister. It was hello, mister. In the voice of the, and they had obviously trained it when people walked by. They reinforced it for saying hello, mister. It was the voice of the store manager. Hello, mister. My father says, shut up, stupid. <laughs> and walks by, right? So we go and we buy me two shirts. Come. As we're walking out of the store, we come by and there's my father saying, shut up, stupid. Right? It was the bird in my father's voice saying, shut up, stupid. I jumped on my, you know, you don't know the tone of your own voice. I said, he sounds just like you. He said, I said, yeah, I'm telling you, it's your voice. Right? I was about 15 at the time, right? So, so obviously you cannot reinforce a parrot to make the sound of the human voice, but you can reinforce a minor bird to do it. If it makes the sound, it just does it naturally. Then you can reinforce it to say what you want. And it was amazing. Every time you went by that minor bird, when people came in, he'd say, hello, or have a good day, or a cup, whatever he would say, hello, have a good day. In the, it, but it wasn't hello, it was hello, have a good day, in the voice of the store manager, obviously. And when you left, he said, shut up, stupid. I'm sure that they got them upset because I'm sure my father wasn't the only one they said it to, right? He's just a bird, I don't know anything. So, but aside from that, Skinner wrote books called Beyond Freedom and Dignity. Those words, phooey, those are all abstract concepts. Forget it. It's behaviors that count. It's behaviors that count. That's all that counts. What looks like what looks like people are acting in accordance with freedom or dignity or principles is simply being reinforced to act a certain way under certain situations. Okay? And for Skinner, let's go in here. How important are emotions? The truth is they have relatively no importance. Right? It's only your behaviors that count. Let me say something to you. How many people here, come back to me, how many people here are studying counseling? Okay. A lot of you. Skinner, there are counseling theories today that really, that, that why they may not be Skinnerian, they come off Skinner's approach. What Skinner said is, look, I know people think they have thoughts and emotions, and maybe they do. He saw people getting upset. He said, but those all follow the behaviors. Okay? So if you come from a classic Freudian approach, or a neo-Freudian approach, which we have, he will tell you, you have to change the un individual's underlying feelings and emotional state in order to get to changes in behavior. That's what it's about. Somebody like Glasser, reality therapy, ring a bell to anybody, says baloney. If a person is depressed and in bed 18 hours a day, say to the person, get out of bed and go to work. I don't care if you sit at your desk all day, you gotta get on the bus or drive your car and go to work. And then eventually when the person does that, you come and say, okay, now you've got to pick up this pencil and write something about work. I don't care. Something. Right? In other words, and what he says is that by engaging in the behavior, the emotions follow. Okay? And that's what Skinner says. For the behavior is all that counts. The rest will come. I might add, by the way, that this is no small thing. Okay? 
when the whole question, when the whole question of this is not quite the same thing as Skinner, but as long as the whole question of integration and integrating schools and other things came, right? When they took surveys in states where there was official segregation, the overwhelming majority of people said no, right? People stand in the street. Two, four, six, eight, we don't want to integrate, right? But when they took polls, that wasn't just a small minority. That was a huge number of people. And there were some sociologists, serious ones, who were for integration who said, this is not going to work. We have to have some sort of massive campaign to change people's attitudes, to make them understand the principle, the rationale behind it, to change their emotional, their fears of integration, whatever they are, and then we can integrate. And other people said, no, forget it. We're just going to integrate, and the attitudes will follow. And of course, that was a policy that was followed, most because the court said, we can't wait, it's illegal. And that's exactly what happened, right? In district after district, even when there was tremendous tension, what they call racial tension, right? When you ask people, if you ask people in the 1970s, right, late 70s, you want to resegregate the schools? Almost nobody said yes. Even people were angry with busing and angry with this thing. Almost nobody said, no, I don't want to. Make it legal, seg segregate the schools legally segregated. Almost everybody said no. It was a very small minority who said yes. Okay? Those days are gone. So there is something to that. But Skinner, most people call it this kind of an interaction, right? Your emotions change your behavior, change your behavior, emotion. When we get to Bandura, you'll see this. But for Skinner, uh, no. For Skinner, the key was its behaviors are all that count. And, and so the only way, let's take a, go back to the PowerPoint, the only way that people change is through reinforcement, punishments, and extinctions. That's all that counts. Now, as you can see, come back to me, there are some people sitting out there, I'm not going to ask for hands, teachers, therapist saying, oh, man, oh boy, I'm going to become an expert in this. I'm going to get my hands. I'm going to become an expert. I'm going to be able to get people I'm working with to do whatever I want them to do. I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll get them whatever they want them to do. That's the promise that this holds out. I, of course, don't believe it's true because I don't have a behavioral approach, but that's the promise that this holds out. That's the promise that many learning theories hold out, although not all of them, but radical learning theory, if I could just get people to do what I want them to do. And the goals in education, in particular, become to get people to do what I want them to do. I'm going to find a way to get everybody to give the right answers on the TOS test or the tax test or whatever they call it, the latest incarnation is. I'm going to get everybody to do this. If I can do the right, I can get classroom management by controlling people and getting people to do whatever I want them to do. Right? That's the promise it holds out. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. So for Skinner, what educators are trying to achieve is behavioral objectives. Goals are behavioral, okay? That's true whether you're a teacher or a therapist, a counselor, whatever. There's certain behaviors that are your objective and you're trying to achieve them, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to do it through reinforcement and extinction. And the purpose of goals is to change and shape behaviors. The purpose of schools or therapy, schools and education, obviously education means more than school, is to change behaviors. Okay, come back to me for a second. Now, very few schools today, and even very few therapies, although some will say, I'm a strict behaviorist. But they'll act as though they are. So what they'll tell you is the following. I know schools better than I know therapy, but I worked in clinics for years, but it's easier to give an example with the schools. Administrators, they'll say, you can write, you can use, here, come back here, you can use all these evil words. Okay, you can use all these evil words. You can say, analyze, interpret. The ch child will know. The child will appreciate. The child will evaluate and interpret. Right? You can use those. Come back to me. But you're told, how do you know if the kid did? Okay? How do you know if the kid did? Okay, 
The only way you know, it's just measured by specific behaviors. If the child can do this and this and this and this, and every kid has to be able to do this and this and this and this, these specific behaviors, then you know the kid can interpret. Well, basically you're back to behaviorism. Everything is behaviors. I have a list of specific behaviors that I want the kid to use. And then I can say, well, that shows the kid can evaluate. That shows the kid can interpret. <coughs> okay. When we get to the problems, we'll talk about that. Okay. Whoops. I'm on the wrong slide. Okay. Now, so why don't people learn? Here's what Skinner tells you, okay? You tell me, why do you th what would Skinner say, after what I've told you, what would Skinner say about why a kid fails to achieve in school? Who wants to say something? Somebody say something, because I want the camera off of me so I can take a drink. Yeah, I have it here. He wasn't reinforced properly. What? They weren't reinforced right. properly. You used, you used the wrong, re didn't, you used the wrong reinforcements, or, There are only two aspects to this. Put it, say it. We reinforced the wrong behaviors. Or, or you got the wrong behaviors. You don't have the right behaviors. Remember, a behavior has to be reinforced that the person can do. So if all I can do is add, subtract, mul and multiply, I can't divide, and you start teaching me fractions, fractions are division, right? One fifth is one divided by five. I don't understand what division is. You've got the wrong way. Skinner spent hours and hours of time doing what he, let's go to the overhead, measuring what he called, ah, I screwed something up here, what he called entering behavior. What can you already do? And then finding the appropriate next step. Sorry. Finding the appropriate next step. Okay, and he had mi little mini steps in his programs. So if I'm here, this is the next thing you have to teach me. Not this. The person who is here should be taught this. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Is that possible? Okay, what he's saying, okay, achievement is defined as desire change in behavior. And in order for the student to achieve, the teacher has to set behavioral goals that the student can perform and provide proper reinforcements. So if the kid doesn't learn, it's the teacher's fault. The teacher has not set the right behavioral goals or has not provided the proper reinforcements. Lack of proper achievement is due to improper teaching. If the child doesn't learn, it's the fault of the teacher. If the therapist doesn't get, make any progress, it's the fault of the therapist. You got the wrong goals, you got the wrong reinforcements. If the administrator can't get the teachers to do what she wants, it's her fault. She didn't, she, she jumped steps. You gotta go successive approximation. You gotta go slowly, slowly, because six people can do. Okay? I might add, by the way, come back to me, that this is a known principle. This is successive approximation. Okay? You're there. And you're leaning a little bit, bit toward carry. You're not sure, but you're leaning toward carry. Okay? If you ask somebody else, you say, okay, I'm a carry supporter or a Bush supporter. Right? I know, I know that this is, this is being taped just before the election. You're leaning toward one candidate or the other. Let me put it that way. A little bit toward one candidate. You go and people say, will you please come and work four hours in the office and let go and send them? <laughs> Get away from me. No. If you come and say, will you do me a favor? Just put a sign in the yard. Let me just, I'll put a sign in the yard. Is that okay with you? A small sign. At the corner of the yard, you say, all right. Come the next day and say, let me put a little bigger sign in the corner of the yard. Do me a favor, will you? Okay. Come the next day and say, look, will you do me a favor? Make three phone calls asking people. We already know that they're going to vote, but just to tell them to get out, will you do that? All right, just three. Then five, then ten before you know it, you're down there four hours a day looking at envelopes doing all the stuff they want you to do. Okay, slowly, slowly. Now that's a change in attitude, but Skinner says the same thing. You have to build it step by step. You can't jump. And if the kid can't do something, you've got the wrong objective. And you can see that for him, everybody turning the page to the same book on the same day is just ridiculous. If you're a counselor to say, okay, 
everybody who's suffering depression, this is what I'm going to do, this is step one, step two. What are you talking about? How do you know? Some people are deeper in, some people are coming out. You can't do that. You've got to, it's got to be individual. And if you don't get it, it's your fault. Or you have the wrong reinforcement. Okay. Now, in case I haven't given away, let's go back to the PowerPoint for one second. There are problems with this theory. I have problems with this theory. Okay, come back to me now. The first problem which I do not have on the PowerPoint slides, but which I have refrained from talking about until now, is the question of behavior. Does behavior, is there only one behavior or one set of behaviors that really shows achievement? Is that what we really want to do? First, I'll give you an example from the world's best sport, baseball. Okay. I know I'm going to torture myself because I'm going to find out that you're all miserably culturally deprived. Who was the first person in Major League Baseball to steal 100 bases during a season, 100 or more during a season? It was not Ty Cobb. He had 94. Murray Say it. Murray Wills, you said it last week. I said Murray Wills last week? Okay, I talked about Murray Wills? Okay, thank you very much. So, the problem is, are you re How? I didn't refrain, I'm sorry, okay? you can see that different behaviors can show achievement. I'll give you another. I didn't tell you about Joey and his village, did I? Joey comes to me. I taught in a school, one of my first teaching jobs. Maybe it was my first teaching job. Comes to me. This was in a, a private school for kids who today would be called learning disabled. They had problems at school, right? So I was teaching about the Iroquois Indians who were a major factor. They were, you know, they were in New York State, Western New York. They actually they conquered most of New York after a while, and they were amazed in the French and Indian War. They started with the British. That's one reason the British beat the French, and then et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and there was a lot about Iroquois. Anyway, we were talking about the Iroquois Indians. So I gave an assignment to write for the Iroquois Indians. So Joey says to me, "Okay." He says, Mr. Lehman, I don't want to write. Can I build a project to do an arts and crafts project to show I know about the Iroquois Indian? I said, sure, okay. But it's got to be good. It's got to show you. Know. He said, okay. So this is what he goes. Let's go to the, the overhead. This is what he does. Okay, let's go to the overhead if we can. This is the sheet of paper. He hands me this. See, these are their tents. This is his project. That's it. That's his project instead of this. Okay, he drew the t triangles a little better than I did, okay? Well, not only is this ridiculous, it's wrong. The Iroquois didn't live in tents, right? Did they say it? They lived in longhouses. How do you know that? Go ahead. Well, I grew up in New York State. Grew up in New York State. There you go, that's how she knows, right? The Iroquois, come back to me, the Iroquois lived in longhouses. They didn't have buffalo to make tents out of. They Trees. They built their stuff out of trees. That's what they had. They lived in the forests in western New York, in central New York, western and central New York. Okay? Who else said longhouses? How do you know? Oh, he's teaching social studies. Just got done studying it, he said. Okay, you have a microphone there. Okay, go ahead. Okay, but when I was teaching New York State history, you have to know about the Iroquois. So, I said to him, forget it, got to write the essay. He said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he said, please, let me do it again. I said, okay, one more chance. So what he did, he took popsicle sticks and toothpicks, and he built me an Iroquois village. And he showed that he knew what he was talking about. For instance, the Iroquois, how did the Iroquois get trees on? They didn't have steel. What they would do is they would take a stone, and they would hack into the bottom of the tree, right? It was tough, but they pull off the bark and hack into the they had a little hole, right? It was tough. You know, they didn't have a, they didn't have steel axes to knock down the tree, and stones are trees are about as hard as a stone. And then there would be a little fire in there. Well, that wasn't too healthy for the tree, right? So the area around the tree would start to die, right? They're way at the bottom of the tree, right? And they they put out the fire, scrape out the dead stuff, and build a bigger fire. And before you knew it, the tree was dead. They push it over, okay? 
and they would use it, and they had ways with stones, they would scrape out the inside, it was softer to have uh, dugout canoes, and they would build some canoes. They did this, right? So in there, he shows the men hunting. He had read it, the men hunted. He shows the women farming. The women from the Iroquois were, were farmers. Not too many North American Indians were, but they were. Farming in rows between the stumps. He showed little stumps, tree stumps that he made out of toothpicks, and the women are farming there. The only thing he asked me, he said, I want to buy figures. Can my mother sew the clothes, make the clothes for me? I said, all right, but you have to tell her. And her mother, she wrote me and said, I promise I won't do anything. He'll tell me. They have this, I can't remember what they called it. The religious leader, shamans, I think they called them. They had a long house. Remember what they called it? Did you pass New York State history? What do they call it? I taught it, I don't remember, right? The religious house. I pick it up. Sure enough, there's a woman inside. The religious leaders were women. He knew, and it was done right. The whole thing was right. He had animals there, and he had the right animals. There were no buffaloes. He had bears and cougars and deer. And now, the kind of stuff that was in western New York at the time. You could still run into a bear every now and then in western New York. And a deer, or a deer. Okay? You could run into plenty of deer in western New York, right? Plenty of them. Right? You gotta watch out when you drive. Okay, and a bear, yeah, yeah. So, he had the right animals, he had the right... He even had a little river there with otters in it. I mean, he had the right animals. He, he, he had read it, he had done it. So, with a behavior that was totally... His mother said he loved the project because She'd have to buy him popsicles for him to eat so he'd get the popsicle sticks, right? <laughs> Something that was a totally different behavior from writing an essay, he showed that he understood and that he had the knowledge of what Iroquois life was like. Gee, I still see this little kid. He's in his 50s now. Lord. Anyway, so that's one problem. Do we really think that knowing boils down to behaving a certain way? And the kinds of thing about analyzing literature, is there only one analysis? Don't we want kids to have, when they write about a book, don't we want them to have unique insights? Don't we want them maybe to come up with things that are different from what other people have said? Right? I remember I was teaching a book, I can't remember what it was, but the person came up with a completely different analysis from what everybody said, right? He wasn't lazy, he was happy with himself. This was in high school. Never heard it before. Made a, I made a good argument. Made a good argument. So, as long as it's a good argument, what do I care what he says, right? That's one problem. Does knowing boil down to behaving? And in most cases, most of us will admit you can show you know with different behaviors. There are other problems, okay? Here are two minor problems. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Because of logical contradictions in the theory, there's no one to set the goals, and the term reinforcement doesn't mean anything. Aside from that, we're fine. Okay, come back to me here. Y'all know what a reinforcement is? Y'all know what it is, right? Who's never heard the term reinforcement before? Oh, God. Not one, not one clean soul. I know that. Nobody? You know what a reinforcement is, right? Okay. Somebody tell me, because I, for the life of me, I cannot figure out what it is. <coughs> I've been doing this for a long time. I just can't figure it out. Somebody tell me what a reinforcement is. Go ahead. <laughs> the gum circles they put on the papers. In there. <coughs> How many people have tried gum circles and hate them and don't use them anymore? Anybody? How many people don't know what she's talking about? Nobody uses three ring binders anymore. But let's try. I want Colleen to sit in her seat. And you can say, okay, give her reinforcement. So I don't know what it is. What do I do to get her to sit in her seat? $75 million a second. Okay. So, money's a reinforcement? So, okay, so Sam, right? Sam, I know about two or three names already, but that's it, and I'll forget them next week. 
Sam has said he started a good strategy. I'll give you a list of reinforcements. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. I need a list of reinforcements. So he says money. Is money always a reinforcement? No, it's not. Can money be a re Well, can you give me something that's always, let's try this. Can you give me something that's always a reinforcement? If you're gonna make a list, I gotta have a list of reinforcement. Because it's possible I'll give her money and she'll say, what are you talking about? I'm Bill Gates' daughter, get away from me. I'm not gonna do anything for money. I got so much money, I don't know what to do with it. All right? Or she belongs to a religious group that's taken a vow of poverty. I don't want any money, money, I don't, I don't need money. There are a lot of people running around and money doesn't mean too much to them. Is there anything that's always a reinforcement? What? Say it. Say it again. Saying something nice. Saying something nice. How many people here, if somebody comes up to you when you were in school and said, Ooh, that's so nice, you got very uncomfortable. Anybody? No kidding. Yeah? One person. So you're telling me, if I want anybody to do anything, if I say something nice to that person when the person does it, I can get the person to do it. Yeah. Tell me your name again. Allison. Allison. Go ahead, Allison. No, I just think if you continue to compliment somebody for their what they've accomplished. That so a compliment is always a reinforcement. For me, it is. <laughs> well, for you. What about, but uh, is it always a reinforcement for everyone? So there's nothing that's always a reinforcement. Let's try it the other way. Is there anything that's never a reinforcement? Let's try that. Like, can I scream at someone and that'll be a positive, that'll be a reinforcement? Well, what, what do you mean? What's punishment? How do I know? Tell me the behaviors, the specific thing in the environment. A punishment, by definition, is not a reinforcement. But how do I know what's a punishment and what's a reinforcement? Can screaming at someone be a reinforcement? Sure. A negative reinforcement is something I take away to increase a behavior, right? Is there something I can always take away and that'll increase the behavior? Like what? Uh, grades. You know. Grades are always a reinforcement, right? Yeah, so if I tell you, so there are kids, if I give them good grades, they'll, they'll work more. Because I know sometimes in our school district, we say, okay, every kid starts off with 100, and that's kind of like, okay, you can keep that 100 throughout the day, but if you mess up, it kind of like goes down. Okay, okay now that's a punishment. 100 to a 99. That's a punishment. So does that stop all kids from messing up? No. No. So for some, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So what you're telling me is nothing is always a reinforcement, and anything, and, but, and anything could be a reinforcement. But I never know it's going to be a reinforcement or not, right? Let's try another strategy. This is starting to get me, I'm starting to get a little annoyed here. Let's try another strategy. Maybe you can define a reinforcement. Can somebody define a reinforcement, what a reinforcement is? I did it already for you. What's a reinforcement? Push it down, push it down. What, you don't have one? Here, give it to her. Increases a desired behavior. Okay, it's, a, it's something that increases the desired behavior. So let's go to the PowerPoint. So that sounds good. Uh, we're starting to make a. We're starting to get in and make some progress here. In order to get a behavior to, to to in order to get a behavior to increase, provide a reinforcement whenever the behavior occurs. Right? That's what you're telling me. So we have. Tell me your name. Emily. Push it down. Push it down so we can hear. Amelia. Emily. Emily. Uh -huh. So Emily said, okay, an, so what's a reinforcement? It's an environmental stimulus that increases a behavior. Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, now I think I'm, I'm on the way. I'm going to take this definition of a reinforcement and put it in instead of the ter word reinforcement in the sentence, okay? Then I ought to know what to do, right? In order to get a behavior to increase, provide an environmental stimulus that increases a behavior when the behavior occurs.
or let me do it a little bit. In order to get a behavior to increase, provide a behavior increaser when the environment occurs. Right? And a, and a reinforcement is a behavior increaser, right? Am I right or not? Sounds like you're talking in circles. That's right. This is, my friends, a classic circular explanation. If I were to say to you, okay, come to me, come, come back to me if you can. We there? Can you put the picture back on me? Okay. Somebody back there? Okay, thanks. If I were to say to you, look, your object is to get a behavior increase. In order to get the behavior increase, give the kid a behavior increaser, you'd laugh yourself sick. So I do the same thing. Hmm, wait a minute. I've got to remember my strategy to blind with science, I'm going to make a fancy word for behavior increaser. Reinforcement. In order to get the behavior increase, provide a reinforcement. And as with all circular explanations, number one, you're always right. It's always true. Works. So I go and I'm trying to get Colleen to sit in her seat. Colleen, you like baseball? you like auto races? No, she said no. So she sits in her seat. Oh, who was the one who sat in the seat for two seconds? Sam. Sam, you like, you like auto races? Not really. Okay. So I try to get him to sit in the seat. Every time I sit in the seat, I give him tickets to the, to the races. I'll he jumps that. up. Doesn't work. What? Oh, you'll sell them, right? See you later. Yeah. Okay. No, they're not for now. They're for tonight. Then I try. I mean, I don't Oh, you don't want them, exactly. <laughs> Sam, you like Brussels sprouts? They're okay. Yeah? Who here really, really likes the taste of Brussels sprouts? <laughs> no, it's three. No kidding. Four, three pe four people. No kidding. Usually I don't get Me and one other person. Who hates them like poison? Right? Most people, all right? That's the majority, right? So for me, it's Brussels sprouts. Say, well, so you give me, who here doesn't like the taste of chocolate? There are a couple weirdos in every group. <laughs> Who thinks they're seriously, that, that they're close to psychosis for not liking chocolate? How can you not like chocolate? You like, you like Brussels sprouts, didn't you? You like spinach? Who hates spinach? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. So I try chocolate. Well, it doesn't, well, no wonder. For her, chocolate is not a reinforcement. If it doesn't work, try this. Trial and error. See what works. And if it doesn't work, you always say, well, for her, tell me your name. Quinita. For Quinita, chocolate's not a reinforcement, so try something else. Try Brussels sprouts. Well, it doesn't work. Well, it worked for me. Worked for her. Tell me your name. Dave. Dave. Well, let's try something else. So then we try Mounds bars. You like Mounds bars? Coconut them, right? Well, that didn't work. Well, let's try, I don't know. Well, let's get off this food kick. That's not working. Let's try uh, season tickets to the baseball games. that work? No, it didn't work for her either. You don't like baseball? Good, I can just fail her to have to correct her papers anymore. Okay, that didn't work. Let's just, I'm thinking of good stuff. Let's try, um, how about uh, season passes to the basketball game. Will that work? No. Well, I'm going to get off sports. So let's try, you see what's happening here? I mean, I'm really trying stuff here. Let's try, um, what about, uh, you know, Reese's peanut butter cups won't work. What about Skittles? Will that work? You don't like candy? Oh, let's try ice cream. Chocolate ice cream. Will that work? Oh, you don't like chocolate, right? What about vanilla ice cream? Oh, that'll work. I give her vanilla ice cream. See, oh, see, it worked. I told you. There's a reinforcement. What about a Snickers bar? How many people would risk your life for a lifetime supply of free Snicker bars. <laughs> Who loves Snicker bars? Come on. That's all? Just three or four of us? Oh, man. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, there isn't much. I, anybody know about Yum Yum cookies? I love Yum Yum cookies. <laughs> One time somebody gave me a box of Yum Yum cookies and said, take some and then put it out for the rest of the faculty. By the and I'm talking about a box like this. 
by the time I got down to the fact, well, the place where we leave the food, they were all gone. I can eat 80 yum yum cookies, now think about it, right? They're coconut and chocolate and gooey dough, they're wonderful. Who here hates coconuts? About half the class. I bet it's the same for people on TV, about half. So it depends. Well, it can be this for you and that for that. This is a class. The term reinforced. And so you get trial and error and see what you can do. Da, 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 da. I don't know. What you're saying is, look, I have no idea how to, Quinita, right? I have no idea how to get Quinita to, uh, you like doing uh, math worksheets? No, how to do math worksheets. Me neither. <laughs> I go, well, try this, try that, try this, try that, try this, try that, bumble around. And when you finally hit something, oh, vanilla ice cream, she'll do it for vanilla ice cream. Oh, it worked. See, a reinforcement works. But I really don't know what to do. And not only that, Quinny, would you do 10, 10 problems of math for vanilla ice cream? She's thinking about it. Would you wash my car for vanilla ice cream? Would you uh, pick up your pencil for vanilla ice cream? Yeah, that's what she would do. The mass she's not sure about. What about get up and do an impromptu speech? How many people would get up and do an impromptu speech for two cents? It's two cents I didn't have. Who here wouldn't care? I'll give you a topic. How many people here? I'll give you a topic. You don't know what it is. You've got to get up and talk five minutes about it. I'll give you two dollars. Who would say, who would do it and say, two bucks? Yeah, the camera guy. Who would do it? Nobody? Yeah, here's some. Are you kidding me? You give me something on advanced nuclear physics, I could BS for five minutes on it. <laughs> I don't care. Right? Because they're different personalities, but not that many, so you have to know. Now, of course, the answer, okay, well, let me give you two answers. So one answer that was given to this, let's go to the PowerPoint, is the Premack principle. It's named after a guy named Premack. And this is, can you see that? That green is no good. Got to change that color. It's an unsuccessful attempt. That stuff that you can't read here, this word is unsuccessful. It's an unsuccessful attempt to overcome the circularity problem. And what it says is a behavior that naturally occurs frequently has a high probability of reinforcing a behavior that naturally occurs less frequently. You got it? Or should I translate it into English? I'll translate it into English for you. Okay. Translation. Using something a person likes to do is a reward for doing something that she doesn't like to do. Okay. So in other words, let's say, uh, come back to me. Let's say we have someone who here, if you just have a few free time on your hand, what would you do? Tell me your name. Yeah. Lisa, go ahead, Lisa. What would you do? You got, you got an hour, you can blow, what would you do? I'll give you, what would you do? What's stuff, something you really like to do? I'd go for a jog. Go for a what? Go for a run. Go for a run. Lisa likes to run. So I see, how many people here that think, think that there's a, she has a screw loose? <laughs> how many people here don't even watch the Olympics because they don't even like to see people run? If God meant us to run, he wouldn't have given us the ability to invent cars. Okay, so left to her own, if she's got a couple hours to kill, she'll run. Lisa, you like to do, you like to do math sheet, worksheets? Sure. Sure? What about <laughs> diagramming sentences? No. No. So I tell Lisa, look, if you do so and so many, I see if she'll do so and so many, and I'll set up a good, the more sentences she'll use, she'll diagram, the more I'll let her run. Okay? For me, it's the more trips I'll give you to a casino. By the way, I just got a memo from the Associate Executive Dean, Executive Associate Dean of the College, that retired people who gamble and go to casinos and gamble live longer and are healthier, both physically and emotionally, than people, are retired people who don't. So that's it. I'm practicing for retirement. Okay? It's preliminary findings. We'll see what happens. So in other words, something she just naturally does anyway, okay, something she just naturally does anyway, I'm going to, 
I'm going to use as a reinforcement. And let's go back to the PowerPoint. Like every other proposed reinforcement, can you read that? Can you read it? You see what it says? It's a bad color. I, they should have yelled at me before. What? Like every other proposed reinforcement, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So she might, tell me the truth, Lisa, would you diagram sentences if I let you run? No. No. So it didn't work. Okay. Didn't work. Sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. The term reinforcement is just a big, fat, circular argument. To increase a behavior, give a behavior increase. After the break, we're going to go and we'll see not only that, but the term reinforcement, there is also, if we're going to stay theoretically consistent, no one to set the goals given the way this theory views people. Okay, see you after the break.